Hello everybody. I will make a summary about uh, the main topics in uh, the chapter one, which is atom before the exam. As we all know, in a neutral atom, we have number of proton equal to number of electrons, which is equal to the atomic number, while the mass number is equal to the number of a nucleon. Number of a nucleon is equal to the number of particles inside the nucleus, which these particles are, num are protons and neutrons. Uh, so A equals Z plus N, and you can find number of neutrons as, the, as in this form, N equal A minus Z. The chemical representation of an atom is represented as X, A, and atomic number Z. So it is represented by these two numbers, A and Z. For example, if I am having 40 nucleon, 40 nucleon, this means that its mass number is equal to 40. And its atomic number is half its mass number. Atomic number is half half its mass number. Z equal mass number over two since it is half. How can we determine its composition? Its composition, and we need to find number of protons, number of electrons, and number of neutrons. Since A equal, since uh, atomic number equal A over two, so it is equal to 40 over two. It is equal to 20. So from the atomic number, number of protons, number of protons, and you can find number of electrons, so they are equal to uh, 20. We still have number of neutrons, number of neutrons equal A minus Z equal to 40 minus 20, it is equal to 20. So by this way we can uh, determine the, um, the particles present in this atom, which are protons, electrons, and neutrons. To calculate the charge of a nucleus in a certain atom, charge of a nucleus is equal to plus Z E. According to the rule, charge of a nucleus equal charge of protons plus charge of neutrons. But the charge of a neutron is equal to zero since neutrons are a zero charged. So charge of a proton equal number of protons times the charge of one proton. And the number of a proton is equal to atomic number equal to Z. Charge of a proton equal plus E. E is always given in the exercise, so we get plus ZE. For the charge of electron, similarly, charge of electrons equal number of electrons times the charge of one electron. Number of electron is also equal to the atomic number in a neutral atom. And charge of electron is negative. So it is equal to minus Z E and E is given 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19 column and column is a charge of electron. Atom is in neutral since the charge of the atom is equal to the charge of the nucleus plus charge of electrons. It is equal to plus Z E minus Z E. It is equal to zero. So atom is electrically neutral. To get the atomic mass, the rule is atomic mass equal A, which is mass number times mass of a nucleon, where mass of a nucleus is equal to 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27 kilogram. For example, if we have atom calcium with mass number equal 40 and atomic number equal 20, we can calculate the charge of the nucleus of this atom according to the rule plus ZE. And it is equal 20 times 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19 column. And we can calculate uh, its atomic mass equal A times 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27. And we get the answer. With respect to isotopes, uh, the difference between isotopes is their mass number and their number of neutrons, but they have same atomic number. For example, magnesium exists in nature in the form of three isotopes, Mg24, Mg25, Mg26. The mass number is different. Uh, each isotope has a different percentage relative abundance. Uh, in this example, magnesium, which has percentage 79%, is the most abundant isotope, uh, while the heaviest isotope is the isotope with the higher number or higher or higher mass number. It is Mg26 with percentage 11. To calculate average atomic mass of uh, of these isotopes, the rule is. 
percentage of the first isotope times its mass number plus a percentage of the second isotope times its mass number percentage of the third isotope times its mass number over 100 if we have two isotopes we use only uh, two values if we have uh, four isotopes it is the same it is a percentage times mass number over 100 and by calculation we can get the average atomic mass in a and b Atoms are arranged in the periodic table in different rows and uh, columns. The periodic table has uh, seven rows and it is formed of 18 columns. The atoms are arranged in an increasing order of their atomic number. To know the correct position of uh, any atom in the periodic table, we have first to make electron configuration. Electron configuration depends on the number of electrons, uh, and the number of electrons are equal to atomic number, so we depend on Z to uh, make electron configuration. By, uh, by writing the electron configuration, we can, uh, can, we can find the column and the row of this element and uh, so we can determine its location in the periodic table. How can we make electron configuration for a certain atom? In order to make correct electron configuration, we have first to write this diagram. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. S, E, and D, and F are the sublevels. Each sublevel is filled by a certain number of electrons. For example, uh, level S is filled by 2 electrons. Level P is filled by 6 electrons. Level or sublevel D is filled by 10 electrons and sublevel uh, F is filled by 14 electrons. The uh, row 5 contains 5s2, 5p6, 5d10, 5f14. Also we have 6s2, 6p6, 6d10, 1s2 then 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d10 4p6 5s2 4d10 5p6 6s2 4f14 12s7s2 5f14 47s 7p6 this is the correct electron uh, configuration. For example, if we start by any atom named X, which has atomic number equal 12, so the number of electrons is equal to 12, we start by when we have 12 electrons to be distributed to be distributed correctly on the energy level. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. By adding the number of electrons, 1s2, 2 electrons, 2 electrons, and 6 and 2, we get the 12. So the number of electrons equal 12, and this is a correct uh, electron configuration. For uh, atom Y, for example, if its atomic number is equal to 32, start by 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Tell 3d10 we have 30 electrons, then 4p2. Then, for 3d10, we have a 30 electron, and the atomic number is 32. We still have two electrons. Two electrons is on sub level P. Uh, since it can be filled by six electrons, a maximum number of electrons is six, so we can put two electrons on P. For atom Z, which has atomic number equal to 26, also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, we have 3d10. Since uh, for 4s2, the number of electrons is equal to 20, but uh, its atomic number is 26. We still have 6 electrons. We can put these 6 electrons on D since it can be filled by maximum number of electrons, which is 10. It can, we can put 6 on it. How can we determine the row and the column of a certain element? Row is the, is the highest energy level. For example, in atom X, highest energy level is a 3 so its row is 3 for atom y the highest energy level is 4 so its row is 4 
for atom Z. The highest energy level is 4. It is not the last energy level. It is the highest energy level. So its row is 4. To determine the column, first it is the number of electrons on the outer energy level. If electron configuration ends by S, take the number of electrons on S. As an example 1 for X, the, no the electron configuration ends by S2. So we have two electrons on S. Its column is equal to 2. In, uh, for atom Y, it's the electron configuration ends by P. And the rule say, it says if the number of electrons ends by P, take the number of electrons on P and add 12. On P for atom Y, we have two electrons. So we add 2 plus uh, 12 to get 14. So it is in column 14. For uh, element Z, the electron configuration ends by D. When electron configuration ends by D, take the number of electrons on D and add 2. So it is in column 8. For elements uh, uh, where electron configuration ends by F, it, it ends by 4F. It is called lanthanide. And if their electron configuration ends by 5F, they are called actinides. We are not asked to determine the column of elements where electron configuration ends by F. In the families of the elements, we have four important families. The first family is the alkali metal. Alkali metal are the elements that exist in column one. So the, their electron configuration end by S1 and uh, their valence electron is equal to one where valence electron equal number of electrons on the outer energy level. If electron configuration ends by S, valence electron equal number of electrons on S. If electron configuration ends by P, valence electron equal number of electrons on P plus 2. Uh, for alkali metal, they start in row 2, since in the first row we have hydrogen, and hydrogen is not metal, so the alkali metal start in, call in row 2. For alkaline earth metal, these are the elements that exist in column 2. Their electron configuration should end by S2, and the valence electron is equal to 2. For halogens, they are uh, elements in column 17. So their electron configuration ends by P5, and they start also in row 2. For inert gases or noble gases, these are the elements that exist in column 18, where electron configuration should end by P6. But they start in row 1, and the valence electron is equal to 8. Let's take an example. If we are asked to make electron configuration for the second noble gas, first noble gas, noble gas is in column 18. Second noble gas, we know that noble gas start in row 1, so the second noble gas is in row 2. According to this information, we can make electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p, so we are in row 2, and column 18, we should stop at p6. So 2p6. Atomic number in this case is equal to the number of electrons, 6 plus 2 plus 2, it is equal to 10. For the third alkali metal, alkali metal, uh, it is in column 1. It is in column 1. But the third alkali metal, since the elements in column 1 start in row 2, so the third alkali metal is in row 4. From the column and the row, we can write electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, we are in row 3 now, 4s2, we are in row 4, but we should stop at s1, since it is in column 1. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. Uh, by adding the number of electrons, we get that the number of electrons equal to atomic number equal to 10 plus 8 equal to 19. Some rules which are needed for calculation to calculate the number of mole or the mass or the number of atoms of a certain, uh, uh, of a certain atom.
uh, we have these two rules number of mole is equal to mass over molar mass so if we need to find mass we can multiply number of mole by molar mass also we have number of mole is equal to the number of atoms over an a and a is the avogadro's number which is given in the exercise and if we have to calculate the number of atoms we can multiply number of moles times avogadro's number let's take an example for example if we have calcium with atomic number and mass number uh, suppose you have the mass of this calcium atom is equal to 0.4 gram to calculate its number of moles we can say that number of mole equal mass over molar mass so 0.4 gram molar mass is equal to a over 40 gram per mole the unit of molar mass is very important it is a gram per mole by calculation we get 0.01 mole this is the number of mole of calcium atom in 0.4 gram uh, if we have to calculate the number of atoms present in this quantity we have number of mole is equal to number of atoms over Avogadro's number so the number of atoms equal n times Avogadro's number n is calculated above 0.01 Avogadro's number is 6.023 times 10 to power 23 by calculation we get 6.023 times 10 to power 21 atoms let's make some application about the rules explained before uh, we have in this table four atoms with different properties let's start by atom copper atom copper has electron configuration which ends by 3d9 so by making electron configuration for copper it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d9 we stop with the 3d9 uh, with respect to element k which is potassium it is the third alkali metal since it is the third alkali metal so it is in column one and we know that the elements in column one start in the row two so the third alkali metal is in row four by making or by writing electro configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4 this is row four but in column one we stop at 4s1 to determine the location of copper in the periodic table, copper, uh, the electron configuration of copper ends by D9. So its column is equal to 9 plus 2. We take the number of electrons on D and we add 2. It is in column 11. For rho, it is in row 4 since the highest energy level is 4. To calculate the mass number of zinc, the given was atomic mass. Atomic mass is equal to A times mass of the nucleon so a is equal to atomic mass 108.55 times 10 to power minus 27 kilogram over mass of the nucleon which is always given it is 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27 kilogram the answer is 65 to deduce the molar mass, molar mass is equal to A, but its unit is a gram per mole, so it is 65 gram per mole. Part 4, we have to specify the composition of argon and write its chemical representation. For argon, we have a nuclear charge, charge of the nucleus equal plus ZE. So it's atomic mass equal charge, atomic number, sorry, is equal to, atomi, to charge of the nucleus over E. Charge of the nucleus equal to 8.28 times 10 to power minus 19 and E is given it is 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19 by calculation we get 18 this is the atomic uh, number and we have another given that the ratio of the atomic number to mass number ratio of atomic number Z over mass number which is A equals 0 0.45 so A equals 0 equal z over 0 0.45 equal 18 over 0 0.45 it is equal to 40 from the atomic number we can determine the number of the protons and the number of electrons since in a neutral atom number of proton equal to the number of electrons since we have a and z we can find number of the neutrons and equal a minus z is equal 40 minus 18 and we calculate the number of the neutron. In this case, we can find the number of uh, protons, number of electrons, and the number of the neutrons of argon atoms. 
in chemistry we have sometimes a mixture of solids mixture of solid is called alloy in this example we have alloy which is named brass this alloy is formed of copper and zinc certain quantity of copper and certain quantity of zinc in this given we have zinc x atoms of zinc and a certain mass of copper the total mass of this alloy is equal to 150 gram and it is also given that, that the percentage of copper in this alloy is 70 percent so since the percentage by mass of copper is given the rule is percentage by mass equal mass of copper over mass total times 100 percentage by mass is 70 mass of copper is unknown mass total is 150 times 100 by calculation we can get that the mass of copper equal 105 gram mass of zinc can be deduced since mass of zinc plus mass of copper is equal to the mass total mass of zinc plus mass of copper equal 150 so mass of zinc equal 150 minus 105 it is equal 45 gram how can we calculate the number of atoms of zinc present in this alloy we have a mass of zinc is calculated it is equal to 45 gram according to the rule number of mole equal mass over molar mass equal number of atoms over Avogadro's number number of atoms is unknown Avogadro's number is given molar mass is calculated before uh, mass is uh, calculated here it is 45 so substitute 45 molar mass of zinc it is calculated in the above part it is equal to 65 gram per mole number of atoms is to be calculated Avogadro's number is given in the exercise 6.023 times 10 to power 23 by calculation we can get that number of atoms equal to 4.169 times 10 to power 23 atoms don't forget the unit please another given this time is about silicon silicon is an atom with four valence electrons and we know that valence electron equal number of electrons on the outer energy level on the last shell so since silicon is in it has four valence electrons it this means that it is in column 14 the lowest dot symbol of silicon is si with four valence electron we have four dots it is written in this form to find the atomic number of silicon it is below carbon in the periodic table if carbon is here so silicon is below it they are in the same column for carbon its electron configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 so it is in row 2 and it is in column since it ends by p at 12 at 12 it is in column 14 carbon is in row 2 so silicon is in row 3 si is in row 3 and it is in column 14 let's deduce the electron configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3 it is row 3 3s2 3p2 since it is in column 14 its electron configuration should end by p2 by adding the number of electrons z equal 2 plus 2 plus 6 10 12 and 2 it is 40 how many atoms of oxygen and chlorine should be bonded to silicon to be saturated silicon has four valence electron it is not saturated it needs four other electrons to be to, to satisfy its octet rule if we make a bond between silicon and oxygen oxygen has six valence electron and chlorine has seven valence electron so silicon with four valence electron should be bonded to two oxygen atoms in order to be saturated and since the chlorine atom has one has seven valence electron it needs one more electron to be saturated so it can silicon can be bonded to four atoms of cr
According to Vesper, how can we write the geometrical shape of silicon oxide? According to Vesper, the rule is Ax and Bm. X is the number of atoms bonded to the central atom, which is Si. In case of Si2, we have two oxygen atoms bonded to Si. So, the rule is Ax2. E is the number of lone pairs on the central atom. Si has no lone pairs since it is the loose that structure of SO2 is as follows. So Si has no lone pairs. So E is zero. The according to Vesper, it is Ax2. Since it is Ax2, it is linear. The geometrical shape is linear. Silicon exists in nature as a mixture of three isotopes, which are given in the table, in this table. But the mass number of the first isotope and the mass number of the third isotope are unknown. To calculate A and A1, which are the mass number of Si with percentage 90% and A1 is a mass number of Si with percentage 4%, uh, we have two relations, N plus N1 equals 31. What does this relation mean? N is the number of neutron of Si21 and N1 is the number of neutron of Si with mass number A1. But we know that silicon atom has atomic number equal Z, uh, Z14. And all the isotopes have same Z, same atomic number. So, for Si, uh, for Si29, its number of neutron is equal to A minus Z. It is equal to 29 minus 14. It is equal to 15. For Si with mass number A1, N1 equal A1 minus Z. It is equal to A1 minus 14 since A1 is unknown. By adding the two mass, the two number of neutrons according to the relation above, it is equal to 31. N is 15 plus A1 minus 14 equal 31. So A1 equal to 30. Find A, we have this relation, A1 equal A plus 2, so A equal 30 minus 2, it is equal to 28. To calculate the average atomic mass, according to the rule, average atomic mass equal percentage times summation of the percentage times atomic mass over 100. For the first isotope, the percentage is 90. The molar mass or the mass number of uh, of Si A A is calculated. It is 28 plus percentage times mass number of the second isotope. It is 29 plus percentage is 4 times mass number of the third isotope. It is A1. It is equal to 30 over 100. By calculation, the average atomic mass is equal to 28.14%. Sorry, A and B. The third exercise in the bi-weekly worksheet 2, uh, we, uh, it is about magnesium. We have a certain introduction about magnesium. And this magnesium is present in many kinds of food. It can be presented in milk, in water, in, in chocolate, and other, uh, other types of food. If we take 100 gram of milk, it contains 60 milligram of magnesium. If we take a certain type of water, in 100 milliliter of this water, we have 10 to the power minus 4 mole of magnesium. How can we get the, no the amount of magnesium in milligram? Amount of magnesium in milligram, so we have to find mass. Mass equal number of mole times molar mass. Number of mole is 10 to the power minus 4. Molar mass of magnesium is given in this exercise, is, it is 24. So it is 24 times 10 to power minus 40 gram. But to change it from a gram into milligram, we know that 100 milligram equal one gram equal 1,000 milligram. So we multiply by 1,000 to get 2.4 milligram. 
this type of water 100 milliliter of this type of water contains 2.4 milligram of magnesium if a mother is preparing for her, for her child uh, milk by using uh, this type of water she puts two spoons of milk each spoon has 11 gram and in a, in a bottle of uh, 100 milliliter of water how can we calculate the amount of magnesium obtained from milk alone? We have to calculate the, the mass of magnesium which is obtained from milk only. In each spoon of milk, each spoon, one spoon of milk weighs 11 grams. So two spoons of milk has 22 grams. The mass of two spoons of milk is 22 grams. And from the table, we know that 100 grams of milk contains 60 milligrams of magnesium. The mother used two spoons of milk. The mass of these two spoons is 22 grams. So, 22 grams of milk contains how many how many grams of magnesium by calculation mass of magnesium in milk used by the mother is equal to 22 times 60 over 100 it is equal to 13.2 milligram so when the mother used two spoons of milk the amount of magnesium in this quantity of milk is 13.2 milligram of magnesium for part two how can we calculate the mass total of magnesium in this bottle of milk in this bottle of milk the mother puts two spoons of milk and 100 milliliter water in these two spoons of milk the amount of magnesium is 13.2 gram in 100 milliliter water the amount of magnesium is 2.4 gram. It's calculated in part 1. So by adding the two quantities, we can get the mass total of magnesium in this bottle. It is 15.6 milligram. From the part above, we deduced that in a bottle of milk containing 100 milliliter water and two spoons of milk, this bottle contains 15.6 milligram of magnesium. If a child took only one bottle of this milk, uh, we have to specify if the quantity of magnesium taken satisfy his daily need. For a children, for children. The daily need required is between 10, between 100 and 400 milligram per day. If the if this child took only one bottle of milk, so the quantity of magnesium taken is 15.6 milligram, where 15.6 milligram is less than the minimum daily need, which is 100 milligram. So this quantity of magnesium is insufficient. So how can we calculate the number of bottles of milk needed to satisfy his daily need? In each bottle of milk, the amount of magnesium is 15.6 milligram. The minimum daily need is 100 milligram for a child. So how many bottles should he take to satisfy his daily need? By calculation, we get the number of bottles equal 100 times 1 over 15.6 it is equal 6.41 bottle so at least this child should take six and a half bottles of milk 
to satisfy the minimum daily need of magnesium.